Stuka Joe here, and I returned last week from uh, Consum World Expo 2018, my first time. I had a great time. I had read about it and had, had seen some videos about it, but it's never the same until you experience it. I was amazed at how relaxed everyone was. It's not a competitive uh, gaming expo. It's just uh, a week of intense gaming. You play a lot of games with no interruptions. Um, I had planned to film more video than, an, than I actually did. The only reason I didn't film as much video is because I had a great time. I was playing games and talking to lots of people and exchanging ideas and looking for ways to improve my channel so that it can be of more service to the wargaming community. So I think I have a couple of new ideas uh, uh, from the expo. And I want to congratulate John Kranz, the organizer. He has that thing so well organized. You know, it runs so smoothly, at least from my standpoint. Uh, and you can tell that John does it for the love of the wargaming hobby. He really likes to make sure that his guests feel welcome and everybody has a good time. So thank you, John. I had a wonderful time. I'll be returning as many times as I can. And uh, hopefully next year I'll be shooting more videos. I did shoot uh, like an hour or more of videos I have edited those videos you're gonna see them now in some cases uh, it's a little hard to pick up the sound of the person who's talking I apologize for that hopefully uh, next time I'll have more experience dealing with those kinds of sound issues um, so I'll be showing you the video and uh, later I'll show you the games that I picked up at the flea market and also at the auction there's an auction each Friday and the auctioneer is Alan Emrick and Alan is a natural and he tells you how he became an auctioneer and I'm not, I'm not gonna spoil that you gotta go to Expo uh, to the Expo to find that out so uh, Alan he's a, he's a great guy and man I really enjoyed that auction and I picked up two games and I'll show you which ones these are at the end of this video so for now uh, this is the video that I took of Consum World Expo 2018. I hope you enjoy it and uh, I'll see you around. <laughs> Stuka Joe here, Consum World Expo 2018. This is today's what? Sunday, right? Sunday the 24th. Playing here with Daniel and Eric, playing Black Orchestra. We tried to kill Hitler once, I failed miserably. So now we're about to try it again. And just to give you an idea, this is a game about killing Hitler, of course, where each of the players is a conspirator. I happen to be Pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And these are all real figures. Daniel is uh, General Friedrich Albrecht, right? He's a Wehrmacht character. And Eric, you have Karl Gerdler, civilian. So you collect items that help you increase your chances with each one of these uh, plot cards. The one I'm going to try soon is this one, the plane bomb. I'm an Abwehr character. I have, uh, well, I'm going to have explosives. Uh, hopefully so that'll give me another one and I roll one die so uh, and I have to roll a number of target icons equal to that symbol there the current uh, level is five so it's really it's really difficult but it's been it's a really fun game you feel the frustration and uh, Daniel you play this game once once before so what's what are what's your feeling on this game Euro style game but with the, with the historical backdrop of, uh, uh, of trying to assassinate Hitler which I mean who doesn't like to try to kill Hitler right? yeah. so, um, I, th I think it's really well done um, you, do have, you do have some board states so it's not entirely abstract you do have the real historical 
uh, lieutenants of Hitler running around that are messing up your plans. You've got events that are messing up your plans, but you've also got guards that can help you. So I think it's a really good mix uh, of mechanisms okay. uh, for this type of game. Okay. And this game, you actually played once before. In this game, we've had a, everybody's been arrested once, right? So right. that, and if it, but if everyone is arrested at the same time, you lose the game, right? Correct. Right. If, ever, if everyone uh, is arrested, if everyone is put in prison, uh, we all lose. Um, you can also be arrested for uh, if you try to assassinate Hitler and fail, you can be arrested. Um, if you are too suspicious and the Gestapo raids, you can get arrested. So there's lots of ways for the game to foil you as you try to accomplish your goals. And I don't think I start, this is a cooperative game, so we all share items, we can uh, give each other items and cards to increase our chances, but uh, the game throws these events at you also, which are based on historical events, like the current one, Wolf Packs. These move Hitler around and raise his uh, military protection here, so it's, uh, uh, you know, it's, it, the, you can prepare as much as you want, but the game throws some curveballs at you. So, Eric, this is your first time playing this game? Yeah. So, what what are your feelings on the game so far? Uh, a little frustrated. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a plan going on, and then I got put in prison, and I <laughs> lost an item, and I lost my cards, <laughs> and I had to get interrogated, and now because of it, I got out, but I made him lose his cards. Yeah. So, it's... So when you're in prison, the way to getting out is you you secretly inspect the topmost card there in the uh, SS deck, and usually the way to get out of prison is to you know uh, decrease the resources of the other players. So well, you can you can fight it out and try to resist, and then you get interrogated, and the results can even be worse. So it's uh, it's cooperative, and those cards can tend to like. Uh, tone down the cooperation if you play them, you know, if you try to get out of prison too easily, I suppose, right? Okay, so now we're going to continue playing, and, uh, and this is by Philip Dubari, and uh, I don't recall the, I'll probably put it in text, the, uh, the name of the company that publishes the game, but this is like a plot to assassinate Hitler, but Euro style, right? Okay, guys, so let's, let's see if we can ki kill Hitler, okay? Thanks. Okay, this is Skies Above the Right, brand new game by GMT. It's coming out, or it, it's, it's out. It's out. And uh, just witnessed a group of fellows playing the camp, wit finishing the campaign game. Mike, right? Mike here. Just one. Jordan and Jerome. Just yes. play the campaign game. Uh, this is a game where you take control of the Germans and you shoot down B-17s. And that's a refreshing change from if you've been playing B-17, Queen of the Skies and stuff like that. Now it's time to shoot some fortresses down and it's easier, it's not, it's easier said than done. Because tape in there for this. they fly in this formation and they're, they're on the board. And you can see that some are higher, are larger than the others. That means that they're flying at a higher altitude. And the, German, the Germans will uh, attack each of these boxes of, of bombers, trying to break them down, trying to m create stragglers, which is the easiest way to shoot them down once they break formation. So uh, you can see the, that the board is a diagrammatic representation of the bomber formation, and uh, the fighters actually are in blocks, which is a neat touch. You're gonna see them on, over there. You got uh, all kinds of fighters there, Amy 109s, 110s. Is the escort display? You have to go through escorts sometimes? It's not a problem, we only have two. And the game brings, what, four Four of these maps, right? You can only attack. Four two formations. Two. They're back printed. Obliques by themselves here. Yeah, back printed. And this is the formation map. Once you force some, some of the bombers to leave formation, there's the pursuit maps. And they are, they are depending on the year. Uh, this is 1943. They're also two-sided. You have two-sided. See, this probably is a B-17H that packs more power than the F. So it's, uh, this is where you shoot the stragglers down or try to shoot them down. And these are spaces for the sun marker. 
So uh, you attack from different angles. You choose the angle. So this is uh, a game where you actually have some choices. You choose from where you want to attack. You choose which of your people are going to attack, from which direction each of your fighters will accumulate experience points and abilities. So uh, you, when you play a campaign game and you lose your best you Fritz ace, it, it kind of hurts, I suppose, right? So uh, this is a uh, yeah, you can't run out of pilots. If you lose too many pilots, you lose the campaign. There's a minimum amount of pilots you have to maintain. Okay. And I saw that some are green and they panic. Green because they think they're green and they'll have some some traits that are not good. And okay. they can get out of being panicked by spending experience points, become you know a regular pilot with more yeah. experience, to become a veteran, and they'll gain advantages that they can use throughout the game. Okay. Awesome game. Oh yes, it looks really fun. And I, and I've witnessed these guys playing it. It plays plays pretty fast. Record keeping is not. I mean, it's uh, for the Americans, uh, the enemy. It's just placing a chit on top. You don't have to keep uh, writing. You don't have to write anything down for though for the Americans. So it plays pretty pretty fast, actually. What I one thing I didn't. These here are this, these. These are return box. So when someone gets when a pilot when a plane gets damaged. Yeah. It has a damage marker put on it. You have to roll the dice to see if the damage is real or not, or superficial. If it's like a real engine hit, the oh, okay, I see. will go here. At the very end of the game, you will roll to see what happens to them. Do they, does it blow up? They don't survive? Oh, okay. Does it crash land? Do they bail out? Yeah, so your pilots could die when they're trying to land so with... with uh, damage on their planes. So damaged planes uh, coming back, it's not not automatic. You have yeah, to see what happens to uh, them. We lost a lot of them on landing. Oh, okay. Well organized. So this is skies above the right. They just finished a campaign game. And uh, this is one that I personally, I'm, I'm in the P-500, so when I get back home, I may hope I find a box there, a big detergent box. <laughs> you see, it's uh, one of those big boxes. Packs a lot, a lot of counters, and this is up to 1945. You can, you have even the ME 1262s yeah, coming can. in, yeah. So it's, uh, I think you get a lot, of, a lot of, a lot of play for for the game because you have a lot of variations, four maps, and uh, and all the aircraft until 1945. So looks like a looks like a very interesting take. It's something different. Never seen this before. So. Thanks for uh, showing me the game around, and I, I had a blast. Yeah, and, I appreciate you sitting in. And uh, no, it, it was a pleasure. Thanks. I was asked by one of my subscribers to do a video on the flea market. So this is the flea market. It's pretty big. I'm going to try to see how specific we can get here. See there, victory games across five Aprils, Napoleon at bay. This is, looks like uh, a new, another edition here. That's not the edition that I have from Avalon Hill. This is from OSG. Air Baron. That's an old Avalon Hill game. What do we have here? War for the Union. Clash of Arms. Some Worthington game. Which one is this? Hold Fast. Hold Fast Korea. Okay. More games, the original squad leader. Some Columbia games. That's uh, Strike of the Eagle, Shrink Wrap. And Napoleon in Europe. Let me see, this is, uh, yeah. This is Eagle games. Eagle games. Thunder at Casino. Hmm, interesting. Civil War. London's Burning, Gazala, Clash of Giants. Have some magazines here, C3I. There's one game I think I'm going to purchase. I think it's here, let me see. It's still here. I have it, but I want to have a second copy. It was dear to my heart. I think they picked it up yesterday. Oh, no, it's here. But let me not announce it really loud. That's the first game I did a video for, so, and I really like it. It's a magazine game. Asia Engulfed. 
That's a block game, Sicily. Monty's gamble. Uh, have some more games here. Uh, this is a Spanish Civil War game. España, 1936. Yeah, I got that one. I, got, I think I have all the Spanish Civil War games. Uh, Twilight Imperium. Some more magazine games here. So, World at War. Siege of Jerusalem. Yeah. yeah let's see. Victoria Cross. What is, I've never seen this. Worthington Games. Some old Worthington Games. Got Samurai. Some more Command Magazine games. Port Arthur. Yeah, I got all these. World at War. Flying Colors. A lot of games here. I mean, a lot of old ones. Some new ones. Reds. This is the first edition. Russian Civil War game. Duel for Kharkov. That's People's War Games. The Total or Creek down there. I think that's first edition too. We got here the Devil's Cauldron. Fortress Europa. There's some more here. Lost Victory. Mr. Madison's War. We have some old games here. Uh, highway to the right. This is SPI Sniper and Russian Campaign. We have some games in boxes and in bags. Mm -hmm. Pacific War. This is Mark Herman's game. We have some more here. The Rising Sun. It's a clash of arms. Ah, Stalingrad. That's we have this one too. Battle for Stalingrad. It's a John Hill game. And this one's brand new. It's shrink wrap. This is Battle Formation Gross Deutschland. Battle for Kharkov. Rosebud Creek. And some more here in Happy King Charles, car driven game. There's a lot. I was here yesterday, I got more today. So I'm in the shop here in the Consum World Expo. And this is the map for Maori Wars. It's a game that's coming up. For Legion War Games, designed by John Poniski, about the New Zealand land wars. Something I know very little about. Here we have the map. It's a really interesting map. It's, uh, seems like it's a period map, and you have a map divided by areas and hexes, and they're color coded, as you can see there. So. Uh, of your turn record track, which is very uh, interesting there. Combat results table. I have some tables up here. It's very, very interesting map and very nice looking map. I guess people were going to order the game and an extra copy of the map for just to hang the map around. And here we have the, here we have the counters. Yeah. This one? Yeah. I'm thinking about it. I have more counters here. I do, and these are the so This one is another one that I signed up for. And uh, hopefully it'll come out soon. Six years or seven years. My Legion War Games. Maori Wars. Stuka Joe here at Consum World Expo 2018. Today is Sunday. Uh, June the 24th. It's 11.05 p.m. A lot of the guys are dead tired and not playing here, but the games are set up. 
So I'm going to take you on a tour of what are the games that are laid out here so they can get an idea. There's a lot of uh, interesting odd games that uh, some haven't been published and some are classics and some are monster games. This is used to be called MonsterCon before so you'll see why they are monster games. So let's take a look around. Operation Bagration or Bagration, I don't know how to pronounce that. But that's the Soviets' 1944 summer offensive. This is an OCS game, just to give you an idea how big this map is. It's, uh, I would say it's about like four regular maps combined. And you have uh, the Gulf of Riga up here. And Poland here. Uh, recognize any specific city there. Vilnius. Let me see if I can. See, that's your typical OCS map, right? With the uh, white hexides. This is France 40, Mark Simonich game by uh, GMT. They have it set up the sickle cut scenario. Let's see there. Germans already in contact with the French. Is that the Meuse River? I think it is. This is Warriors of Japan by MMP. This area map there. Huge counters. These must be like one inch counters. The new Mark Simonich game is going to come out soon. Stalingrad 42. It's a big map. It's actually two. Must be like two or three uh, regular maps. I like the frame they use. So here you see the situation near Rostov. We zoom in a little bit. It goes all the way up. The coast here in the Black Sea, Novorossiysk, Tuaps, and uh, this is right near the Turkish border, I suppose. You see the terrain there, mountainous terrain, mountain division, and here you have the area for the reinforcements already on the turn record track. This is a big game. The DNBM Foo game by Kim Kanger, Legion War Games, set up. Ready to start. And Hellenis by GMT, there's a block game on the Peloponnesian Wars. I guess the Athenians are in blue and the Spartans in red. block game and apparently you roll a lot of dice because of that bag that I'm seeing over there. They're playing Operation Typhoon. I think they, they blew up the maps. You see the maps are huge. And the counters are huge too. They blew up the counters. And it's actually when you look at it it's you got three tables with uh, so you have some space for the players to pass in between the tables, but it's supposed to be those three maps connected. They're huge maps. So here you have, uh, for example, the front lines. And, I, and let's take a look at Moscow so you have an idea. This is the area around Moscow. This is a Pacific War game. I don't know which one it is. Seems strategic. See there, the situation in China. A lot of counters. About two maps put together, I think. The 
The War in the Pacific. Oh, okay, that's the one. I think it's like upcoming Compass games. It's a big box there. This is the war also by Compass Games. This is a strategic World War II game, Europe. Looks like uh, the Germans are invading France right now. So you got that 1940 campaign going on. Here you have uh, displays with the unit counters. Here you have the OCS Sicily game in progress. Americans are pushing the Germans, uh, moving upwards and northwards. The British still not make it to Catania. I think these are German units. I don't see any Italian units left here. Oh yeah, there's there's the Italians, some Italian units. This is Tunisia too. More OCS, and you can see the situation up there in the uh, in the coast. Uh, they're reaching Tunis, the Allies. It's Atlantic Wall by Decision Games, their monster game on the D-Day invasion. Okay, so Americans are pushing inland. It's like they're playing just on half this half of the board. They don't have anything on this other half. OCS, this is DAC. Tosh Africa Corps. So this how big this map is. And uh, where's Tobruk? There it is. Where all these units are. There's Tobruk. And uh, Definitely a big game. This would be like four maps. And we contrast with Table Battles by Hollandspiel. So this is... I don't know if this is the new one, the new version. Catholic League Infantry. Mm. Let's see. This is... This Table Battles. Yeah. This is uh, La Bataille, Winter's Victory, the Battle of Proche et 7th to 8th February 1807. I have the tracks here and the units uh, in line, well formed lines. We've got the Russians on the right side in green and the French in blue. Ready to battle it out. Thunder in the East by Victory Point Games, a game that's coming out soon. And uh, they got it set up for the 1941, I believe. Have they started? They may have. See the Romanians there in yellow. Cool thing about this game is you play the whole Russian front and see barely no stacks of units. It's very clean, and you have different unit sizes. You have counters that are larger, representing armies for the Russians, corps for the Germans, and uh, air units behave very uh, uh, differently in this game. They provide uh, bonuses, but you have to roll for them, so you don't know what you're going to get, which increases the uncertainty. Here's the displays with the reinforcements for the Soviets. And you can see there, you got a lot of armies. Those units there with the four X's on top. And the round units are the headquarters. And the number is the range from which the units have to be in order, I believe, to be able to move or attack properly. More displays here. The 
This is their, their first installment, which is the Eastern Front up to 1944. You see that half circle there beside that uh, Panzer Corps? That's a delay marker. So, uh, it's interesting. You have each headquarters has a, you see a die or block there. I think that's the number of uh, hexes and ranges that your units have to be. Uh, if they're armored units, I think it's 12. So that's six for the infantry units, 12 for the armored units. Do you have like the huge encirclements? You can you can have those here too. Oh yeah. Oh, that's what I was trying the to pockets. Do. That's what I was trying to do. So okay. I was trying to push out. I had I started with two tank armies, mm -hmm. and I was going to try to push out uh, and then break them apart so I could start getting these guys these uh, these headquarters. Yeah. With the idea to then cut their supply and start you know, going right, going left. To, Finish it off, but he popped the reserve. Yeah, he plugged the line, the, the yeah, gaps. He plugged the line, yeah, and uh, turned into a fizzle. And now, so you're playing the 1942 uh, summer offensive. Yes. Oh, okay. And how far are you in the offensive right now? Just middle of the first, the first turn, the first week. Okay. The uh, Germans have moved, and now the Soviets are responding. Okay. And are you doing like historically emphasizing more in the south, or are you going all over, all over wherever you can? Historically emphasizing the south. In the south. My objectives to the oh, okay. And, uh, and took Sebastopol. Oh, I see. Romanians took. You have the Romanians there right now. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna start the sweep. Hopefully, get these guys into the fight sooner rather than later, because mm -hmm. I could really use this. And drive for the Caucasus oil oil fields. Yes, yes. yeah. Starve them out. Grozny. Surprise there. Well, the map looks very nice, and I like that there's no counter clutter. I mean, it's no huge stacks. And everything, you just can see the, the headquarters are round, and uh, that cube is the range, right? The range for yeah. supply. When you see a 6, it's for infantry units and 12 is for armored units, right? And then a momentous decision is when you have to move your headquarters forward. And it's an agonizing one. <laughs> because it causes a logistical pause or something of some kind, right? Yeah, so you'll run out of supply. Yeah. And, and then you will stay out of supply until you've, you've gotten them to, you know, you've moved them up because they have a countdown. So if you're doing well, if you're thinking it through, you're bounding them so you can keep the momentum going. Yeah. Uh, okay. Or if you're like me, then you, uh, you kind of fall <laughs> down a little and you're like, oh, no, yeah. I gotta wait a little bit. And that's what you, you use, like your half round, your uh, counters. Those, those are the delay markers, right? Yep. So, these are. Start off. It's a very, very ingenious use of, you know, the shapes. And that, what I like is you look at the situation, you know what's happening. You don't have to sift through towers of counters to, to see what the situation is. So. Um, and it, that is absolutely like you said, it's a very nice thing. You can't, you can't start stacking a bunch of units, a bunch of you know, armies don't stack together. You can, you can stack two mediums, but you can't attack forward with two mediums mm -hmm. yeah. um, in, into the same hex. You can only attack with a limited number of, of yes. units outside of a hex. So. Yes. So that's where these little divisions come into play because they become important in your decision making is to go, okay, well, I want to get just a little bit more a little bit to more. get that extra. Ah, so I see. So you, you can attack with one core unit and one division unit, or one, one small size unit at the, at the same time. Yes. Oh, okay. So that's why you see over here, we've got an army and a division. Over here we have a core and a division. And the cool thing is that the space, the spacing allows you to see both unit, you, you see the strength of both. Yes. So you don't have to start lifting things. No, it's, it's very, uh, you know, uh, aesthetically pleasing and, and, and well, I like that distinction between the large units, large counters, small units, small counters, and you can see both at the same time. So that's, no, it's a very clean system, yeah. Well, thank you guys. Okay, thank you. 
Here's the Mediterranean game, which is coming up afterwards. So you have uh, Italy, south of France, Yugoslavia, Greece, and of course North Africa. We have uh, Tunisia here, and the coast of Libya. Brook. See it there. And Egypt. And again, you have the displays. I think they're prepping this one to play. This is the Third World War. Hmm. So let's see where. Of course, in the Middle East. Iraq, Iran, you have uh, parts of Turkey, I don't know who the manufacturer is, the game company, it's the Third World War, apparently the Third World War con continues on this next table, yeah. Let's see, this is the Western Theater. Yeah, it's a monster game. This is one I have no idea which game it is. It's a huge map of. Uh, you got France and the frontier with Germany, 1944. Looks like a game for the drive into Germany for 1945 because. Got the Americans attacking there. I don't know if that's the Siegfried line. Those uh, pieces of cardboard, elongated ones, are the boundaries for, I believe, armies and corps. Take a closer look. Yeah, it must be the West Wall there. It's fortification markers. World War II. And some tanks there. Yeah. But no idea what this game is. Trying to look for a title, but can't find it. One of the great battles of ancient history series, the only naval installment. I was watching these guys playing this afternoon now, now it's gotten really tangled up. Both fleets, you got a lot of ships on fire. And, uh, well, they're triremes actually, you don't call them ships. So it's, uh, looks like it's coming to its conclusion. And it seems to me that the blue ships are have the worst of it so far. Who knows? It's the commands and colors about the, the American Revolution. Tricon. Don't know what scenario they're playing, but have here the Patriots on this side. And the Brits on this side. No. That was fun. Quartermaster General, 1914, just ended right now. Central Powers won. How long did it take? Like two hours? Two hours. Two hours. You're playing with five players. Okay. Yeah, I would have played faster if everyone knew. Okay. Ongoing game of Cataclysm. Second World War, and this is 1940. And the Russians already have Poland in 1940, so. Probably be in Berlin in 1941. <laughs> you keep on marching in. Yeah, probably. Yeah, 41 42 is the next turn, so maybe. <laughs> Who knows, yeah. Surrender? You can try to get another American. 
Yeah, and what do the, the blocks mean, though? Uh, uh, control? Control of mostly places so that aren't your home areas. Control, no. Oh, okay. So counting victory it's points is basically just counting the cubes. Oh, okay. Yeah. And is he Italy neutral right, or for yeah, yeah. whatever he was trying to do? What was what was he trying to do? Japan are all allied. Okay. Russia. You could try it in Britain or allied. Oh, the US is in the war already. Okay. Are there any of these crisis things left in the back? <laughs> what the turn at? Yeah, it's got to be one in there somewhere. Stuka Joe here, and today I'm playing my second game of Plot to Assassinate Hitler. I lost miserably in the first one. I'm the Abware player. That's the green pieces on the board. This is a custom-made version of the game that I made a long time ago. And uh, let's take a closer look. Here we see the situation uh, near the Abwehr headquarters. The SS has just uh, arrested Canaris and he survived interrogation with a sweet talk in the board and he's still alive and undetected. We're playing with cards instead of the usual chits. And this is my current hand. In this game you get a lot of cards. So this is my current hand of cards. Abwehr player managed to recruit Stauffenberg, but the play of a double cross card switched him to the SS side. So you can see that the SS has Stauffenberg, Heydrich, Himmler, uh, Schellenberg, and Mueller, very powerful characters all together, so no good can come out of that. Here you see in Eastern Europe, I managed to recruit successfully Hafton, but he uh, just escaped from a trap set by the SS, Zones of Control, managed to mass two of them. So well, let's see if we can get him back to Berlin where he can be useful. So this is the situation right now on the map. And we're seeing that the uh, next turn will be the one for the SS. So I'm awaiting my SS colleague to arrive to see what's going to happen next. The SS is investigating one of my characters, Mueller. Uh, the SS gets to pick one of my chits. Remember in this game, we substituted cards for chits. Now one of the drawbacks is that when you have a ton of cards like I have, and I must have like 30 cards, you gotta spread them out so that the other player can select a card. So that would be one of the drawbacks of the cards. So he has selected one. Okay, he's gonna show the card. I'm not gonna look. Okay, you showed it? Okay, good. <laughs> so we're here playing uh, Plot to Assassinate Hitler with my buddy Ike. This is our second game. I lost the first one pretty badly. So uh, I was the Abwehr and I'm the Abwehr again. And we're playing, of course, with the, these custom components. And Ike, what's your opinion of the game? And uh, what, what are you, what's your feelings about, about First, the game? everybody, take a look at the components. If you've seen Joe's earlier uh, videos, you've noticed the incredible quality of what he's made. Uh, one of the most Thank exciting you. things is we've taken the chits into cards. So, for example, what we used to have is a number of counters either set on the board or in a cup. We now have a full color graphic card. What has amazed Joe and I in playing this game is now 42 years later, we're uncovering still nuances to it. We're uncovering things in the rule book that they mapped out that we've just had an enlightenment on. Mm -hmm. So it gives us immense possibilities with the dynamics of the different chip play or the cards as to what can happen. So for example, we had one recently where we had the loyalty card as me, the SS player, and I was able to pull Rama into the conspiracy. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Earlier in the game, we saw a uh, surround party on Admiral Canaris, the head of the Adler, yeah. and we were able to investigate him, take him off to jail where he was taken for interrogation. Yeah, this is to this part of the board, which is the uh, not-so-nice SS interrogation cell, and uh, he managed to talk his way out of it twice, right? So, uh, you'll notice uh, as earlier as he set up this video, there were some snapshots that we took still pictures of that action and we saw that SS uh, coagulation over here which hauled him away and then as you saw in the earlier picture the Admiral was a great talker yeah. so he got out of jail deployed back into his headquarters and he's now out trying to hunt the streets of Berlin or the other areas in the occupied territories to pull other members into the conspiracy. Yeah, so we're at turn six right now 
And uh, let's see, I have uh, three turns to declare a coup. If no coup is declared, I lose. And if I declare a coup, I still have to uh, survive on the Valkyrie table. Right? Yeah, and then killing Hitler in this game, different from other games, is not enough. You gotta kill Hitler to have the, any uh, Vermac uh, characters that are semi-recruited join the conspiracy. Otherwise, they stay where they are. Uh, to win, the Abware player has to eliminate every SS piece, which are the uh, black uh, counters that you see there. Or vice versa. If we uh, start shooting in the streets, I have to take out all of the Abware pieces as the SS. Yeah, so it's a shootout at the end only if the coup is declared, and it's never automatic. So let's see what happens. Thanks, Ike. Stuka Joe here. I'm here with my buddy Steve Liskey. We're going to play... Stalingrad Verdun on the Volga see there this is by Last Stand Games designed by Mike Rinella area impulse game about the battle for the city of Stalingrad and uh, we have the game set up and we've been photobombed and and Steve you were one of the playtesters right I did do uh, some playtesting last year at Kansen World okay so I'm probably gonna lose this game and I'm the Russian so uh, you yeah, probably take a pounding at the beginning and see if we can survive. So you can see we have the game set up and uh, it's a pretty clean game in terms of counter clutter. There's not, you can see that all the counters are on the board, no stacks. So you can easily determine the situation on the map. You don't have to be sifting through stacks, which is something I like a lot. So we have the game set up. And we're going to start playing. We're going to play the standard game. It's five turns, but a lot happens in five turns. So we'll keep on uh, interjecting here with short videos as to how the situation is developing. We're about to start impulse number seven. First turn, Soviet impulse seven. And the situation is pretty grim for the Soviets. Let's take a closer look here. See that early on in the impulse, the Germans captured Mamayev Kurgan, and that's important to interdict the Soviet Volga crossings. And the Soviets have the 13th Guard Division waiting to cross Volga, but they can only do that at night. Uh, the Germans are, re are now pushing uh, from the south. They took the train station, and there's uh, an ongoing uh, Dispute for the food combine. It's worth two victory points. The Germans just assaulted it and were not able to take it. So that is a contested uh, area. The Germans, uh, at the end of their impulse, mobilized. Uh, I think that's the uh, 300, 300 Light Division, is that? No, 289th Division. And it's uh, advanced adjacent to the Triangle Wood. So uh, this is the situation at the beginning of Impulse 7 of still turn 1. And this is a five turn game. Okay, an update. We're at turn 3 actually. Impulse number 2. Victory point score. The Germans have 4. They gotta get 10 at the end of five turns to win. They've captured already the lumber mill the food combine and now the area that is contested is this one here which is the Volga uh, the docks Volga station it's been contested uh, see here the situation on the map and here we see the situation in the north uh, the Derzinski tractor factory has been taken over again by the Soviets, but we lost capability of building back uh, tanks. So, it's okay. Okay, the game ended in turn five, impulse nine, a mutual pass. There was no way that uh, the Russians, as you can see here, could retake two victory point areas. The Germans had 11 victory points. I had to retake two victory point areas and the Germans had uh, fully stacked fresh units there. The Russians were too exhausted. Volga crossings are deceivingly bloody here. Uh, the, the early 
during the early, earlier parts of the game, I had no problem crossing the Volga, even with Mamayev Kurgan in the possession of the Germans. But then those uh, last turns, the units that crossed all practically were reduced. So I had a great time. This is my first time I played this game uh, from start to finish. It is a well-designed uh, game. No problems with the rules at all. Uh, the game is uh, very streamlined. Uh, the components are great. Just a glance at the map and you know what's happening. So this is Stalingrad, Verdun and the Volga. And this is Steve who beat me at the game. So Steve, thanks a lot for playing. It was a pleasure. It was awesome. It was Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. It was tense all the way. All the way, yes. So, Stalingrad, Verdun and the Volga. One more game played here at Consum World Expo. Get the game, roll the dice. And tell this us is uh, Hastings by Revolution Games. And uh, that will put it somewhere you want on the board. I don't care where. Next one. Yeah, same thing. He will show up here. So, Roger, you're you're what? The Normans? The Normans. Normans. The blue guys are the Normans. And you're the Brits. The I'm the Saxons. 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 Yes. Yeah. Did you get to take a lot of money? Looks like the thing's getting uh, is good for the Normans. Well, there's there's a, a lot stuff. of dead guys. Yeah. We have quite the dead pool over here. <laughs> but it looks like the Normans have to go uphill, right? They are, they are going, and I've been up the hill and down the hill. Oh, up the hill. Okay. They've reached a couple places, been pushed back, breached again. They're on the hill over here. Well, this flank is looking quite grim for the Saxons. Yeah. We've, we've held on this side, uh, so we'll see what happens. Okay. It's turn seven. Turn seven. No. Well, get back later and see how the situation is going. Thanks guys. And we see here the end of Hastings and the Normans won, right? Normans won. Normans won and we got somebody running off the table here. Yeah, Harold turned tail and ran. Harold, you know, broke the marathon record. So what happened? Well, Yeah, the Saxons got some initial, uh, Daniel was handling the, the Saxons. <laughs> I was handling the Saxons. He got some initial breakthroughs, heard some help from his archers, and he got his cavalry and infantry on uh, my left flank, and they kind of started slowly but surely grumbling my line, and I couldn't stop them. I did some damage in the mid game. I, I made a minor comeback. I thought I might be able to hold out, but uh, it was not to last. Mm -hmm. it smashed me in. Harold almost died a couple times, but got away. But, uh, I lost the scenario. So I see it ended in turn nine. What are, what are the victory conditions? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's I so much it, for eliminated unit, killing leaders. Uh, if you occupy certain hexes on the board, enemy's board edge. Okay. But we just fought it as a battle, and we figured it'd be clear. Okay. Like, and Roger, this. This is Roger Miller, Revolution Games, so you've stated before, you told me you play all your games, so you probably played this one a few times, right? I played this one a lot when I first uh, purchased it from the designer mm -hmm. back in 2013. Mm -hmm. but I've played it only a few times since then. Okay. But, uh, yeah, it's always, it's always, I told Dan at the beginning, you have to be patient in this game. And then both of us got hits right away and that whole patience thing <laughs> went out the window. Went out the window. And it just became a brawl. <laughs> and that actually was just a perfect quick convention game. It was a brawl. Lots of people dying all over the place. Right, well, just great. Yeah. Okay, and it's, uh, so the, 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 the Normans won even, the, even though they had to go uphill, right? Yeah, they, they did indeed. Okay, so that's uh, Hastings. Revolution Games. Thanks, guys.
Well, Paul, tell me about the game. Tell me uh, what's it about. Now I know. I, it's, now that I know, it's not a submarine. It's a destroyer, Fletcher class destroyer, like the ones that. Uh, the first game was uh, Battle of Samoa. So okay. Congo and the Japanese yeah. attacking, and, and you, I mean, the Japanese player inflicted damage, and the U.S. player was all. This is the second scenario envisioned in the game set. Okay. Where now you're in Halsey's Typhoon, and you're just trying to you're fighting off the Typhoon effects. So you basically draw off a Gale deck, which inflicts damage. So like you're, you're rolling, or compartments are being damaged, and you're flooding, mm -hmm. and then you just you resolve down the line. And then on the American turn, you're trying to repair the damage. So, so say for instance, I'm starting, right? Which I just started, so I'm on turn two. So you basically draw two cards. So I drew two Gale cards. So you just resolve them in order. So first thing it says, increase list by 10. My current list is 55, so I'm gonna go to 65. Okay. To get to 90, you're done. And then all L2 crew, which are the doubles, they reduced to L1 because of the roll. So you basically flip all these guys over there. They're less effective. Okay. You don't spend it L you don't spend much time at L2 because there's a lot of these in the deck. Uh, so that card's done. Now we're on Vents Flooded. So you draw a compartment card to figure out who's being damaged. So it's the Afconning station that's down here. So all crew go to lockers. So he pops over there, they're basically ineffective. Okay. And then you get plus one flood. So you grab a flood marker and you throw it in the space. And then in all adjacent spaces, mm -hmm. left, right, and below, but plus this card was drawn earlier and certain cards have certain symbols on them. You know and these are all like damage cards or? Yeah, these, these are all the, the Typhoon cards. The American, okay. the American side's over here. Once I get done with them, I'll, we'll roll over that way if we have enough time. Each flooded space above the weather deck causes five lists. He's above the weather deck. This the purple lines of weather deck, so that's five degrees more of list, so now it's 70. That one's done. Typhoon wins. Current list is 70. So you had another five. So now we're at 75. We're like 10, 15 points away from losing. There's no fires, there are no leaks, so we're done. That's the Japanese turn. Now the Americans got his hand of cards. I've never done this before. How am I doing? Am I doing, doing great? And yeah, don't worry that with the magic of editing, magic of editing you'll be a star. Yeah. So we're looking at this going, we need to get the list down. Because like the first, again, I've only had the game a couple of weeks. Yeah. It took me about four games before I was starting to win because I finally figured out, oh, I need to control the list because that's how I was losing. I was rolling over every time. So I'm looking on here for something that allows me to control the list. And this, this is a good card. So we call for volunteers to jettison top side weight. So I need to get the XO. He's near the searchlight compartment. Mm -hmm. And there's no wreckage or whatever. So we basically, we're gonna toss that over the side. So we get a plus one wreckage there. But it, because of the, the storm raging, two crew members are eliminated. So these guys are killed. They both go ineffective because there's no crews in their spaces any longer. And then we get to subtract 15 from the list. So that takes us to 60. So you're battling against a typhoon in this scenario? Yeah, but it's all, wow. that's why it's a solitaire scenario, because there's really no decision making. And I, and, I, and, I, and I take that in other, in other scenarios, it's damage from, could be from a kamikaze and stuff like that? Yeah, I think he has one envisioned for, for where there's one to stroke. He's, again, he's got all of this. Yeah. Okay. One is a little more uh, interactive because again, you're, you're making decisions on the Japanese side. But it is eventually, you know, there's no limit to where you go. I mean, this is real dreams to the Bismarck. Okay. And and has any publisher picked it up so far? Compass is, is okay. I don't get involved in the business. Side, because it look, looks really interesting. You know, the kind of it's a, it's a different take on naval war, on naval warfare. Right? You're trying to uh, save a, a destroyer from damage, which is a very realistic outcome. And and it gets it, it always gets abstracted in games. You know, with one die roll, it's repaired. Yeah. Well, thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. I'll, I'll be. I'll be. Hey, everybody out there in okay. internet land. I'll be keeping an eye on this game because it's. I, I like the games that are out of the ordinary. You know.
And, I, and it's not a battle of the bulge so game. So you're not a Navy guy, but again, it's... Yeah, I know. I, mean, it's, like, it's, I like games that marry well. Yeah, this, uh, I like yeah. the Black Orchestra. Right? Like, yeah. Like and you like you played it last night? I set it up this, morning, this afternoon before we went to dinner. Oh, okay. Because uh, I, you know, I have it out every year. Yeah. Just to keep, so keep it going. Yeah, sure. Until it gets published, of course. And then, then, it'll, then you'll have the published version here. So it looks very interesting. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see about that. Okay, thanks, Paul. Oh, thank you. Okay. And I want to show you just a brand new game off the press. Uh, yes, it's Kingmaker. Avalon Hill. Uh, and the, I think this is the, the latest edition from Avalon Hill, which is, I think, 1980-something. Flip that box lid over so you can film it. What in the 1970-something? And then... Uh, yeah, but it's not the black box. This is the... Uh, that was the last box. The newer box, box. yeah. Second edition. The last edition Avalon Hill made before going under. With, with all the general variances. Oh, okay. Uh, and you're playing with the general variants? Yeah, pull that. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Variants, oh, yeah. All the variants. So uh, I've been told with the variants, it's playable in four hours. Well, he a times. Couple house rules. We have a variant that does it in four hours. Oh, it is? oh okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So let's see here the decks, the situation on the board. And we have some roses and everything. You're getting older and older. Oh, yes. Evocative. Yeah. Make it more evocative. Going over the wall. Oh, you have a crown and everything. Yep. This is, is. this is for the Soul King. Soul King. Oh, okay. This you is got for the Master of the Royal Artillery. Well, it's got props and everything. Yep. We don't have it's got okay. trophies you and everything. Oh, yeah. I'm going to up these odds. He's adding forces to go over the wall. Is he going over? He's going over the wall. Which wall? Which wall is he going I'm over? I'm going to make the Plantagenet Constable of Dover Castle. Who, who are we planning on going over? Right here. Okay. Spin it. Well, he's filming. Oh, we're trying to. Oh, so where are we? Lancaster. Lancaster. Two, 280. I so Braveheart. Three to two. Three to two. Go over the wall. So three to two. Yes. He he is. Is. He's over the wall. Who's ah? Fire and flames. Women, <laughs> children. Ah! Plantagenet. Plantagenet is okay. Calvin. I got a little excited. <laughs> George of Clarence. New Saros flying. George of Clarence. George of Clarence. Oh, flesh wounds. Flesh wounds. Clifford. Clifford is fine. And Richard. Richard of York. Fine. He's fine. fine. fine all successful and over the castle you don't walls. I think you, well, do you all fit in there? 400? I'm not at 400. I'm 100. That's what I'm saying. Do you fit? You're three something. There's a lot of people. It's crazy. I need some people see how old. camped in tents outside. 400. No, the, you're all in. The old no, games are still fun, yeah? Yeah, yeah all in. No vacancy. Place. Every room in the house taken. We need to play Lancaster. <laughs> <There's laughs> <one of the laughs> right. This is Fortress America. I have it. I've played it. And I've lost every time with the... Uh, with the with the attackers. Some, the Americans have the nukes, right? And stuff like that? Yeah, we have the lasers. The Star lasers Wars. and everything, yeah. Wow. Oh, I feel so bad for you, Barry. But don't, don't the don't Americans are in, a, are in a pickle here in this one. <laughs> don't lie to me, man. Don't be hating. I'm hating. I am hating. You are hating. <laughs> You're a hating fake. <laughs> this one's called Sepoy Mutiny 2019. So this is not out yet, but it's... Looks like the rebellion in India, in India. So this is one of those games that I would really be interested in because it's uh, something different. It looks really nice. And uh, let me see who designed this. Oh, it's cross. I can't see it. Okay, so really nice. We have two of Mark Simonich's games. This is Holland 44, which I like, which is. Uh, who doesn't like Market Garden? And here you have the British uh, in a pickle here with the uh, Germans surrounding them in Arnhem. So, and on this side we have Stalingrad 42, which will probably come up next year, early next year. It's another one of Mark Simonich's games. As you can see the map is very clear always counters are very nice 
And there's a lot of dead Russian divisions here and double divisions. You see those uh, counters with uh, the double silhouette, those are double divisions, which is a nice touch to reduce counter clutter. I believe this map is 48 inches wide by, I think, 49 or 50 inches. So it may fit on my table. I don't know. I gotta, gotta check that out. This is a game that intrigues me a bit. It's Congress of Vienna. A game about the Congress of Vienna. That's uh, like a peace conference, right? Uh, and the Napoleonic Wars. Let's see if I can make sense of anything here. Here we have a track. Let me get my... We have Napoleon. And the armies of France. Army of Naples. The Elbe. The Gran Armée. Army of what? Oh, the Mediterranean, Spain, and here we have the Ital the uh, Austrians. When they slap. Got the Austrians on the one side. So you have victory points for Paris. And also other areas. The British on this side. Got the Swedish and the Russians here. And there's a, let's see if I can make sense of this. These seem like the minor countries, Poland, Norway. Those in blue were part of the French Empire, I suppose. Interesting, well, this is, this is something rare. Not sure who has, who's going to publish it. It looks interesting. I love this map. This map is just so cool. This is, uh, to, how do you say, Toulon? Toulon, 1793. This is Legion War Games. The Siege of Toulon. This is where Napoleon became famous for the way he placed his artillery, artillery or something. Right, he placed his artillery here and bombarded the Allied fleet. The Allied fleet and there. And the Allies are, the, the, I know that's the British, the Spaniards, and I know there's some more, right? Chilenese and... Uh, uh, <laughs> were there any Aus Austrians or something? I don't know if there were. The Austrians never showed up. They're oh, they were to. Oh, okay. So Andy was the French? Yes. And who was winning? Very hard to say. Very hard to say. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's a siege game, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's a slow developing game. It's not always immediately obvious who's, yeah. who's playing well and who's not. And I know that the numbers is the maximum number of, I don't know if it's units or strength points that you can stack there, right? It's yes. like a stacking yes. limit Correct. By, by, by space, by area. It's a, it's a beautiful map. Yeah, it looks very nice. Yeah. yeah the, uh, these, these areas with the cannonballs, and those are the possible bombardment areas, so the French can bombard the fleet, the fleet can bombard the French. Oh, okay. Um, and you kind of have a duel that way, and you've got some fortifications, uh, and the red areas are the victory point areas. And the fleet is not represented by counters, or...? No. The, uh, and how do, you, how do you assess damage on the fleet? There is a chart uh, that you use where you... Uh, this is the ship... Oh, okay. Shore and shorter ship oh, okay. apartment. Oh, okay. I see. And you do that. And you keep track of the, the points. Yes. So if you if you if you damage it enough, they'll they'll go away. I suppose. You just have to leave. And... Okay. Yep. So let's see. And I guess the Allies then have to find a way of getting that artillery. Uh, m the French moving that artillery from where where it is, right? Yeah, you have to figure as the Allies have to figure out a way to prevent them from bombarding your fleet while not losing too long. Oh, okay. So it's sort of a game. Yeah. You gotta have to, you have to keep a you know a decent force there, mm -hmm. but you do want a sortie out. Yeah. And that's that's where you have to go. And here they have uh, Nemesis, brand new game by Legion War Games about Burma, Burma campaign 1944, and the map is very nice. This is a Kim Kanger game. He does everything. 
the map, the counters, uh, design the game. And one thing I like is the counters are big. You have big counters, but there's also smaller counters. See there, the limited supply counters are smaller. And the good thing about that, you place them on a unit and you can still see the unit beneath. So uh, it's another situation where counter clutter is not really a problem. See here, the side here, uh, this, I think this is India. Oh, very nice, this is uh, before the con, I, about two days before I received it, mine is still in shrink. Here we see the border with China, I suppose. Yeah, the Chinese are those in uh, this uh, blue-gray color. Those are the Chinese fighting it out with the Japanese, which are in uh, the, the light yellow or light tan. And then the British are, of course, in khaki or brown. It looks like the Japanese have like a two-front war here. Nemesis. Here we have one of these space games. I don't know what the name of this one is. Firefly? Firefly, apparently. It has meanies. I'm not really big into space warfare, but I mean, if it's... If it has war, it's a war game. It doesn't matter if it happens in space. No. The map is nice. Meanies are nice. You have cards. So, today's Friday, it's my last full day at Consum World Expo 2018 and I'll be playing Crusade and Revolution. This is a strategic card driven game about the Spanish Civil War. I'll be playing the Republic and it's a myriad of uh, factions that don't get along well with each other. And my buddy Daniel is going to take the uh, Nationalists. This is the situation at the beginning of the game. You can see here in the starting situation, the nationalists have barely landed mainland Spain with their uh, uh, army. They want to bring the army of Africa. These are the strongest units from the coast of Africa. These are the regulares. You can see they have strengths of three into uh, any of these uh, specific ports of entry, Cadiz, and uh, the idea is for the nationalists to be able to connect with their other forces that start the game separated. And these are the forces in, uh, in uh, nationalist territory in mainland Spain. Now there's a special rule that uh, there's a supply problem for these forces, so they're very limited in the number of, ta of attacks they can make until they link up with those uh, nationalist units here. So that's going to be part of the initial challenge for the Republic to delay as long as possible uh, that both nationalist sectors connect. Now the, uh, the Republic has a, a problem of its own. It has two uh, separate sectors. You see here in the north of Spain, we have here Asturias, and you see the militia there with the brown colored uh, background. Uh, there is a separated uh, nationalist uh, force in Oviedo, which is isolated. They have to take care of that. Then you have Santander, the Santanderinos, and you have the Basques. And none of these guys, even though they're on the same side, none of these factions, they get along with, with each other. Well, you can't attack with them together. So the nationalists will want to uh, eliminate this uh, sector as soon as possible, as they historically did, in order to then uh, probably take over Madrid and Barcelona, which are the main cities on the Republican side. Okay, I'm here playing uh, Crusade and Revolution with Daniel. And Daniel, where, where are we in right now? What turn? We are on turn nine, just starting turn nine, which is uh, September, October 1937. Okay, and uh, it's a tense contest. And I think turn nine, we're almost halfway, right? Yeah, halfway, yep. halfway point. And uh, let's see the situation. Uh, Daniel, you're the nationalist, right? And Correct. We can see that uh, 
we were able to, to connect both nationalist zones early on in the game. And we're in the, um, called the mobilization epoch, in which we have a substantial number of core units, which are these units that are larger, uh, the fifth eighths of an inch units, they use this uh, core size unit combat table, so they, they pack a harder punch. And uh, I've tried to fortify the proximities to Madrid because Madrid is uh, one of the key cities here. And so, what are your feelings about the game and how, what's your impression about the game? Is it the first time you play it? This is the first time I played it. I think it's uh, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's uh, good tension for the cards and events, so you have a lot of tough decisions to make. Uh, as far as how to play your cards and when to play your cards. Yeah. Um, and you have a lot of choices as far as uh, how, how you want to approach uh, the game strategically. Uh, so, yes, I like it a lot. And uh, I, was, uh, I was impressed how the game, you know, the, we've had no problems with the rules. Everything's there. Everything yes. is clear been able to keep track of all the, the bookkeeping is not bad I mean there's uh, two tiers of, of, of uh, things you have to keep track one is victory points and the other is Republican morale which has an effect on the number of cards that each side can have if, if it decreases to a certain level then you get an extra card so you would have a hand of eight and then it continues decreasing to ten then my hand shrinks from seven to six and uh, it, uh, you can play event cards that increase Republican morale and victory points as well as capturing the key cities. And you have one of them. Well, you, you took out the northern front. You captured Bilbao, which is one of those key cities. And uh, after taking the northern front, as historically happened, then the forces of the nationalists were in the northern front were free to to join the, the main front and that's where when I'm trying to just fortify hold the line and see if I can get reinforcements and that's been the struggle so far and uh, I don't think we're gonna get to the other epoch which is the um, what do they call the war of the armies because there's more armies if you see here there's more armies waiting to come in the game and it's, there's a special procedure in which you uh, uh, make the uh, deploy the armies and take uh, the smaller uh, division size units on. So I'm having a great time with this game. It's 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 really good when a game is well designed and you just you can concentrate on the game and not uh, having to house rule anything. So Daniel, thanks a lot for playing the game and uh, we're gonna go to the auction. And we we may continue if we not we don't continue. This has been great for me, so I appreciate it, Daniel. Okay. Okay, here is the part where I show you the games that I picked up either in the flea market, at auction, or purchased, or they were just given to me for free. All the games that I didn't have before that I now have just because I went over to Consum World Expo 2018 in the flea market. I picked up this game, Fire in the Sky. The box wasn't like that. That happened in my suitcase on the way back, but this was a game that I was looking for and uh, it's hard to get because it's discontinued and it appears that uh, MMP will not publish it again. This is a game designed by a Japanese designer, which is something that intrigues me because it's a Pacific game designed by uh, Tetsuya Nakamura and it's been well received and uh, solitaire suitability is high, so may make a video soon. Uh, of one uh, aspect of this game or another fire in the sky I also picked up at the flea market this game Tornio 44 Finnish naval landings behind German lines yes you're not there's not a mistake it's uh, it's a game pitting the Finns against the Germans you're gonna say well but the Finns were allies of the Germans in World War II yes but what happens in this game, what it recreates is that after Finland gets out of the war and surrenders to the Soviets, the Soviets demand that they uh, push out all German forces from Finland and the Finnish are kind of slow doing that. 
and when the Soviets put more pressure, the Finns actually attacked uh, German units near this town in Tornio in Finland, and that's what this game is about. So the topic grabbed me, and this is a Swedish uh, wargaming company, which I have no games of, Miku Games, so I decided to pick this one up. The uh, component quality is very nice, and I believe it's just uh, 16 pages of rules, so it's uh, one mapper right up my alley, so uh, very nice pick, I believe. Uh, I'm very happy with this uh, purchase at the flea market. The uh, shop that opens for one hour each day of the expo, I managed to meet uh, Mary Holland and Tom Russell from Hollandspiel, and I purchased two games from them. This is one, The Wars of Marcus Aurelius, a solitaire game by Robert Daleski. And uh, this is one uh, game where the player takes control of the Romans, that is Marcus Aurelius and his forces, and um, he's combating German tribes. And there's been some videos of the game in the internet, so I picked this one. And the other game that I picked from Holland Spiel is this one, brand new game, The Big Push, which is trench warfare on the Western Front. And it's, this is a card game by Renaud Verlac, French designer, and you can see there it uh, includes only 24 counters, but 112 cards and 8 pages of rules. So this is an interesting take on trench warfare. A card game about trench warfare. And this is brand new by Hollandspiel. At the Expo, I met Kerry Anderson, and he has a series of games. Uh, many of them are space war games, but he has one on the Cuban, Cuban Missile Crisis, which is interesting for me. So I picked this one up, and I happened to meet Kerry, he's a really nice guy, and uh, we're going to give this one a try pretty soon. The Cuban Missile Crisis by Kerry Anders. At the shop at the expo, I met Randy Lean of Legion War Games. I had done the cards for The Great Game, a recent release by Legion, and that's how I um, met uh, Randy, but I had never met him in person, so I met him at the shop. I practically have all the games by Legion War Games except this one, so when I asked Andy to, uh, that I wanted to get this one, he gave this one to me for free, and I thank you, Randy. This is a special project that Legion did with War Diary Magazine, and it's a game about the Battle of Ball's Bluff. So this is a Civil War Battle. October 21st, 1861, so very early in the war, and this is a game designed by John Ponisk. Expo, I also met Roger Miller from Revolution Games. I talked with him, uh, with Randy, and also I met Andy Lokes. He's the designer of Toulon, 1792. Uh, one day I walked into the shop, and I wanted to purchase this game, so I told Roger about it, and Roger gave it to me as a present and uh, thank you very much Roger this is one of the three games that Revolution has designed by Herman Lutman on specific battles of the Civil War and this is about the Battle of Pea Ridge and you can see the map art here by Rick Barber which is very nice indeed so uh, the next day after uh, Roger gave this game to me I walked in and knowing that this is a terrific game and the latest in the series, I purchased this one, Longstreet Attacks. This is the game uh, about the second day of the Battle of Gettysburg when uh, James Longstreet orders that attack on the Round Tops and the uh, vicinity there. And this is also a design by Herman Lutman using the same system which uh, appears in Thunder in the Ozarks, as well as uh, Stonewall's Sword. Those are the three games uh, in the series. And it's a very uh, clean tactical system, um, not a lot of bookkeeping. I've read the rules, I haven't played it yet, but it seems to me a very straightforward and clean system. So I'm looking forward to playing this game. Now on uh, Thursday nights, I believe it's Thursday night, 
they have uh, what is called the GMT spare parts giveaway where a GMT gives spare parts of its games to people who are interested in picking them up I picked up a set of cards for Washington's War which is a very nicely done card driven game on the American War of Independence I also picked up a mounted map board for Labyrinth and here it is I have to play this one still haven't played this one and I also picked up one of these detergent sized white boxes these are terrific I'm putting my video equipment inside and it serves its purpose very well it's a very sturdy well-made box and finally uh, the folks from GMT gave me these trays so I mean trays are always a necessity I click my counters and store them in trays so thank you very much uh, people from GMT now Friday nights is the night of the auction and uh, Alan Menbrick is the auctioneer he a, does a terrific job he keeps that crowd entertained and it's just wonderful just to see him you know handling the auctions of games starting with one dollar and sometimes they can go uh, in the hundreds now before the auction uh, there was uh, some products by Victory Point games they were giving out for free so I picked up this game I don't have which is Paul Koenig's sixth Panzer Army and uh, Paul has a system of battles uh, reflecting battles of World War II there's uh, many uh, for the Arnhem battles uh, D-Day beaches and this one has to do with the Battle of the Bulge the sixth Panzer Army sector so this is brand new game and given for free by Victory Point Games and at the auction I picked up two games I spent a total of forty two dollars thirty which I paid for this game a shrink wrap copy of SPI's Leningrad the advance of army group north in the summer of 1941 designed by Rick Rustin and the graphic design of course is Redmond A. Simonson now this is not a big game this is a one map game and I think I have uh, the magazine version and they made a boxed version I'm just gonna keep it for collector purposes it's still in its shrink wrap uh, if I play it I'll play my uh, copy my um, magazine copy if it's the same game I'm almost certain it's the same game so those are the games and game parts that I picked up at Consume World Expo 2018 and uh, if you're like me traveling on a plane uh, bring uh, extra space my uh, carry-on uh, luggage was full and my suitcase was kind of empty so I could fit all these games plus the ones that I brought to play so that's all I have in terms of footage from Compton World Expo 2018 and I have my hand up here because I cut myself shaving again so I don't want to look like an intellectual but what the heck you know so next year I'm going back again I love it I love the concept it's a very relaxed atmosphere and everybody was very friendly and hopefully next year I'll have a better way of shooting these videos with better audio I mean I have to learn about interviewing people and stuff like that I'm not used to but I mean it's no problem I think I'm in a period of transition now I uh, the camera that I want to buy is sold out so the positive side is that it must be good if it's sold out right so I have to wait a couple of months and hopefully you'll see you'll notice the changes in the quality of the videos and there'll be some new kinds of wargaming videos apart from the ones that you see in this channel so I hope you enjoyed the video I want to give thanks to everybody who uh, played games with me over there at the uh, Constant World Expo and everybody that was so nice to me uh, and this is Stuka Joe signing off for now. Thanks for watching.